tin roofing. You've probably heard that term before in reference to metal roofing, especially if you're in a location like the southern United States. But nowadays, using tin as a metal roofing material isn't very common, so where does that term come from? Well, today, we are taking a look at the history of metal roofing and the origins of the term tin roofing. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Make sure you subscribe if you're new here. We release new metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Well, today we are taking a look at the history of metal roofing and where the term tin roofing comes from. You're probably already familiar with many historical metal roofs, even if you don't know it. From the copper systems that dot Europe on cathedrals and palaces, now deeply patinaed, to the aluminum roofing that can be traced back to the 1800s, there's no shortage of legacy when it comes to those materials. Until the 1600s, metal sheets had to be heated and hammered by hand until rolling mills became more widely used, which in turn drove the cost of metal roofing down. So where does tin come into play? In the mid 1700s, tin was mined in Wales. However, the roofing materials made from it weren't actually pure tin, but in fact, tin-coated iron, known as tin plate. Formed into shingles or sheets, it was exported around the world and became America's first introduction into tin plate metal roofing. It was used on buildings such as the Pennsylvania State House, also known as Independence Hall, and Thomas Jefferson's Monticello House. Large plates were also bended and formed into standing seam systems. However, this imported roofing was not quite ready for the average residential application because its installation requirements were so intensive. As Jefferson was finishing his construction of Monticello, a process of rolling iron plates into stronger, stiffer panels was being developed and patented in England. This later became known as corrugation and is the precursor to the many exposed fastener panels that we use today. Back in the United States, it was not until after the Civil War ended that tin metal roofing became more commonly used for ordinary residential applications. And by this time, tin-coated iron shingles could be installed with nails. Lead was also introduced into the coating to create a 65 to 35 lead to tin alloy. This was known as turn plate and had a distinctively duller finish than the previously used tin plate. This alloy continued to make those metal roofing systems more affordable. It was touted as a long-lasting roof system with fire-resistant qualities and low-maintenance requirements, many of the same features that metal roofing manufacturers boast today. It was also used especially in areas with high snow loads to help evacuate heavy snow off of buildings. Of course, today, metal roofing technology is very different, with steel and aluminum being the main types of metal that we see on roofs, optimized formulations that make up the coatings, high quality paint systems, and testing to prove durability. However, it's reassuring to know that the roots are strong and that metal roofing has been ingrained in construction for generations. I hope that was interesting and I hope you learned something about where the term tin roofing comes from. If you have any questions, please comment down below. We'd love to talk with you. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett. And we will catch you next time.